Spider-Man No Way Home. That's the sequel that we've been waiting for. Well, I've been waiting for for many, many years. With the inclusion of uh, two special guests. The fact that the, the story was a bit complex, but you know, if you followed the other movies, you know, you're very much up to speed with, with what they're doing. This would have been the darkest Spider-Man, I think. Mm. Well, maybe not completely dark, but you know, Spider-Man 3 would have been pretty dark as well. It was like child-friendly in many parts. I think originally the, the plan was to have Craven the Hunter. Mm -hmm, I think so. I'm not sure that's true. And apparently, allegedly, Aaron Taylor Johnson, who was Quicksilver mm. in the MCU's movies, was going to play him. Um, that I, I don't know what the original idea would have been if uh, this movie hadn't been in the MCU after the whole fiasco with Sony and Disney deal of sharing the character. Um, Tom Holland did say that the alternative ideas they had were exciting and interesting. So it would have been interesting to see where they would have went with her. I reckon Toby and Andrew still would have showed up in it because it, therefore it's under Sony's. <coughs> <coughs> you know, they could, still could have, but it just wouldn't have been set in the MCU. I was gonna say as well, you know, from a perspective where you know you started watching Spider the Spider Man movies and stuff when Tobey Maguire was first Spider Man, and I didn't really sort of get into Spider Man until the last like three or so years when Tom Holland started. So definitely from the perspective of someone that's only kind of sort of watching in the last few years, like the movie really blew me away, especially with all the references to the old, the older films and the other Spider Man movies, and I can't imagine like being someone like you that's been a fan of it for such a long time and then finally seeing it all play out in the screen because you know for someone like me that hasn't been a fan for as long I thought it was absolutely incredible. Yeah I was waiting for it to happen. Uh, I've been calling it <coughs> I've been calling it for six years that Marvel should do that there and it looked like it was going to happen when Mysterio mentioned the multiverse in Far From Home. Mm -hmm. And especially after seeing Loki and WandaVision it really looked like they were going to go there. And then, of course, all the friggin' leaks from the movies, as they say, the worst kept secret in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. All of the leaks, the, the set photographs and the videos that were pulled out. There's a video of Andrew Garfield in 4K in the final scene, mm -hmm. you know, where the climax takes place. And he, he asks, like, Toby, you've got web blood or something like that there. And then he still tries to deny it. But then it was really hard to tell if it was real or not whenever you've seen the leaks because people have gotten so good at Photoshop and video editing that, um, <coughs> especially with defects, it's harder to tell now. Mm -hmm. Years ago, it used to be. It was easier. You could tell if it was fan made or, but because people have gotten so good, you know, it's almost like there's a competition going on there. Right? You know, the fans can create a better defect than some of the studios can. Mm, definitely, mean, yeah. Look at the Luke Skywalker scene in the Mandalorian. Like you could tell it was CGI, and then there was fans that actually did their own edit. And actually, did better than what Disney gave us. Mm -hmm. Like especially with all the leaks and stuff. Like I saw a lot of people kind of saying online, like, "Oh, well, it's already kind of been leaked. Like, why don't they just announce it? Why don't they just announce it?" It's like there is such a thing as contract. <laughs> you know, there's things that you're allowed to say and that you're not allowed to say. I mean, the amount of times in the previous movies that Tom Holland had said things that he wasn't supposed to, you know, and got in a decent amount of trouble for it with Marvel. Like, I'm just kind of surprised that it wasn't him that ended up saying something because he can't really keep his mouth shut. There even was a meme saying that, you know, if Toby and Andrew were in the movie, he would have spoiled it already. Yeah, he would have spoiled it. I saw that too. But there actually is an interview uh, that was released last year sometime, and the presenter asks him, or Toby McGuire and Andrew Garfield in the movie, and his face just said, Yeah, so he, he doesn't have a very good poker face, does he? <clears throat> so like, I, I knew right right there and then that they definitely were in the movie, because like, why would he have reacted like that there? Yeah, he's mm -hmm. not. He doesn't have a very good poker face when it kind of kind of comes to keeping company secrets and movie secrets. I mean, he announced that there was going to be a third <laughs> Spider-Man movie, like on an interview before anybody else had like found out that there was meant to be, and the interviewer was just kind of like, "Oh, there's going to be a third Spider-Man," and Tom was just like. Yeah, 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 there is. I guess I can just say it now. <laughs> we should already know there was going to be a third one. Mm -hmm. We already knew it was coming. Yep. Just, uh, they like to announce things on their schedule. <coughs> mm -hmm. I think, you know, <coughs> the secret was still relatively well kept. Because I think up until, you know, the point where the day was that the movie came out, that even though, you know, there was a lot of it online, there was still that kind of line of, but will it? Like, you know, even it's it's at a point where it has kind of been confirmed, but not enough where your brain definitely goes, oh yeah, 100%. So I think for a lot of people, there still was a bit of, like, excitement there. Because it's like, yeah, you know, they're probably going to be in it, but what if? What if they're not? The way I looked at it was that they went all the effort of bringing back all the villains mm. and the same actors. So it made sense to bring Toby and Andrew back. It did, yeah. It would have just been a missed opportunity. There was also one division kind of played on the multiverse a wee bit and then mm -hmm. with the whole Evan Peters and the Ralph Boner joke you know and 
I can see that now that it's actually funny about it, that by the time it was kind of sickening, it was annoying because uh, they also put a tweet out there saying that uh, Paul Bettany said there's an, another actor in this uh, show that appears in the last episode. I've been looking about it for a long time, and it turns out the joke was to do with his own character, a different incarnation of his character, and it's like, really? Mm -hmm. So it kind of felt like a slap in the face, but you know. They gave us what they want, what we want, with no way home, so I can I can let that go. Mm -hmm. But they know now not to do that again because they got a lot of fan backlash for it. Yeah, I think they did the movie in the perfect way, especially with keeping all the original cast and of all the villains from the other Spider-Man movies. Because definitely the movie would not have went down the way it did if they had have recast. Because it would take away a lot of that kind of <laughs> magic and that nostalgia. For people like I feel like that was a really important integral part of the movie and the success of the movie because you can definitely tell throughout it that they do play on a lot of nostalgia which you know a lot of movies that have kind of remakes and sequels and stuff you know do that and I definitely think sometimes that can hinder a movie like they'll focus too much in the past or they'll focus too much on stuff that happened before but I feel like there was a really good balance of introducing like the old stuff back to maybe newer <clears throat> fans that haven't seen it but also you know keeping the current story you know relevant and interesting without like, diverging too much from it. I'm something of a scientist myself. <laughs> something of a that scientist was great. Myself, Fell yeah. forced but I liked it. I liked it and then Doc Ock says, you know, uh, the power of the sun, and then Toby finishes his line, you know, and saying, in the palm of your hand. In the palm of your hand, yeah. Which was cool. I, 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 I cracked up, I seen the clip leaked on the internet where Doc Ock first arrives, <laughs> mm -hmm. and he's like, asking Tom Holland, what have you done yeah, with what my have you machine? Yeah, what have you done with my machine, Peter? And Tom <laughs> Holland's just kind of like, what? <laughs> I think, uh, I don't know, like, I, I think I might have laughed at that harder than I should have, but I think that was probably one of the best things he could say, what have you done with my machine? <laughs> it's like, Tom's like, what machine? Who are you? What do you want to be? What is this? <laughs> Honestly, Doc Hawk was one of my favourite parts. Like, he maybe wasn't in it quite as much as, like, you know, Willem Dafoe was, Green Goblin, but I just enjoyed him so much because, you know, up until the point that, obviously, you know, he gets cured by Peter. Like, he's just so done with everything. He just can't be bothered. He hates all this magic shit. He just wants to go home, you know, and do his science experiments. Like, he doesn't give a damn about what's happening around him. And it's just very amusing to watch. Like while the like while the others are kind of just more confused, he's like angry confused, yeah. and I find that very amusing, and it suited his character really well. Just in talking about the villains, I thought the direction that they took of kind of Peter trying to fix them. To, cure, to fix them and cure them was actually really interesting and something that I wasn't expecting because I suppose again, especially in particular with Doc Ock and uh, Green Goblin, like. When you're watching it in the older movies, you don't really think about the fact that they don't really have 100% control of what they're doing. Yeah. Like, you never really think about that, like, the person that's under, you know, under it. Again, especially with Norman Osborn, you know, having the Green Goblin persona, and when he's in his own mind, and when he's himself, you know, he's terrified, and he doesn't know what to do, and he wants it all to end. And that was kind of a perspective that you got to see a bit of in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, but I felt like was executed really, really well in the remake. Like, you got to see more of that kind of, you know, these people aren't necessarily all totally evil. You know, except for Electro, who's kind of a dick. <laughs> Electro's yeah, just kind of just, a dick. I think all that electricity went to his head. Yeah, it literally to just the point the where he got a new hairdo. Yeah, the par all went mm. to his head, yeah. And, but I thought that the approach that they took with introducing the villains was really, really good. Because I was kind of... I was just expecting it to be, you know, they came over from the other universe and now they, like, Peter Parker has to fight them and defeat them. And I was pleasantly surprised that it was a slightly different route that they took, and I think that ended up almost making the movie darker, because then, because Peter decided to try and help these people, you know, he pretty much loses everything, because mm. he decided to do that. And it's really about, you know, this version of Peter Parker finally realising, you know, the cost and the sacrifice that it takes to be a hero, to be Spider-Man, that it's not just all <laughs> fun and games. Because the other two Tom Holland movies have been relatively light-hearted. Maybe not the end of the last one. Yeah. But, you know, they've been relatively light-hearted. You know, Peter Parker's a teenager. You know, he's still going to school. He's still dealing with his friends. But now it's kind of at a point where that's all changed and that's all been stripped away and Peter's <laughs> alone. I know that Tom Holland isn't 100% sure yet if he's going to come back for another Spider-Man movie. Mm -hmm. I heard that discussed. I mean, I would love it. If Tom Holland will come back for another Spider-Man movie, but I feel like if he didn't, it's not a totally bad ending. Like they've kind of left it in a place where I don't think it's completely. Yeah. It's it's not like they left Toby's movies or Andrew's movies where it's kind of it felt 
unfinished. Like yeah, I forgot to say goodbye to Toby and Andrew. Yeah, like, like you know, here you did. You kind of did in this one. You know, you you get to see kind of the conclusion. You get to see what Peter's doing now. And yes, while well, they can make more movies and make more content, you know, if Tom Holland decided not to do that, you could still kind of have a good solid trilogy completed. You know, watching. You know, this version of Peter Parker going from, like, a young, naive, you know, friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man into, you know, what he is now, like, kind of the lone Spider-Man. <coughs> you know, he's yeah. lost everything very similar, you know, to the other Peter Parkers, you know, who all had More that like moment. Yeah. yeah. Like, even even with Andrew Garfield, like, even that moment for him was when he lost Gwen Stacy, mm -hmm. which I, I did enjoy as well might be going on a slight tangent, but I also enjoyed in the movie that they did reference that and they talked about it a lot because it was something in particular with Andrew's version of Spider-Man that you never got to see yeah, completed. Yeah. One of the many things, and it was nice to get to see more, especially maybe years down the line, because because you don't actually fully know like the timeline of where they are yeah, it was kind now, of confusing. Which, but I kind of liked that because it's kind of up to the reader, or not, sorry, not the That's reader, nice the viewer. Uh, in Toby Andrews' universe, it's, it's 2020 and 2021, mm -hmm. and they've aged, and the yeah. reason the villains didn't age is because they died, and they've just been brought back, and yeah. they're exactly... Like the last thing they remember is fighting Spider-Man. It's then, like the moments before they were going to be killed by Spider-Man. And then they're in another universe, and like 20 years or so have passed, mm -hmm. and they're seeing the older Spider-Mans that they've uh, met, and it's like, whoa, wait. It's like, what the hell? Yeah, and they're so confused. So I'd say in Toby Allen's universe, it's still the same year or mm -hmm. so. Because you can definitely tell that a lot of time has passed, because even there's the same where Toby asks Andrew, it's like, oh, well, do you have anybody? And, you know, uh, Andrew's like, no, not for a while. Or something like that. Like, he hasn't had anybody pretty much since Gwen Stacy. And I liked the recreation shot that they did with MJ, yeah. where Andrew manages <laughs> to actually save her from a very, very similar fall. That was a really nice moment, I thought. It was done really well, and the delivery on Andrew Garfield's face when he did it was really Perfect. good, because might be a controversial opinion, but, you know, he's my second favourite Spider-Man <laughs> after Tom Holland. I know that sometimes in the fandom, if you don't say that Toby's your favourite, you can get lynched, but... Well, Toby would be my favourite because um, he was my first live-action Spider-Man, so mm -hmm. I would have more of a closer connection to him, and I do like Andrew. But I think I put Toby, Andrew, then Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, That's your kind of personal... Because, you know, by the time uh, they, they cancelled Toby, it's just I agreed to, to like Andrew, and then when they cancelled Andrew, I didn't really care much for Tom, and they actually, the same thing nearly happened again. You know, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, just, where it nearly ended in the second one. I didn't uh, grow that connection with Tom because I was, you know, I was let down twice. You were waiting for it to kind of blow up, so you never <laughs> really made the it full. It nearly did. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why. You know, so I would have more of a connection with Toby and Angela than I would with Tom. Mm -hmm, definitely. Like there, there's so many parts to the movie. I mean, the movie was two and a half hours, so it's one of the longer Spider-Man films too. So there's definitely an awful lot. <clears throat> To discuss something that I wasn't a hundred percent sure that they were gonna do, and I was kind of surprised that they did was when they killed Aunt May, mm. because it just, I don't know, it, it just didn't seem like those movies were gonna go that kind of direction. Because especially since the first one of Tom Holland's, like they were definitely a <laughs> lot more kid friendly. Like there was yeah. a lot less, you know, adult <clears throat> content. Like of course there was adult jokes and stuff, but it was a lot more kid friendly. Yeah. So I know usually <laughs> in in trilogies is when it does start to get dark, but I was still kind of. Surprised that well, they did it. They needed to kill up my off so that Peter would have the isolation and it also gave Toby and Andrew the opportunity to be the mentors. Yeah. Because they were older and they've been through what Tom's already been through and they're able to, you know, put them on the right path and mm -hmm. keep them right whether they're. Like, whenever he went and tried to kill the Green Goblin, it was Toby that he jumps down. And mm -hmm. the reason Toby did that is because, you know, Toby also mentions that he went after the guy that uh, allegedly killed his Uncle Ben. Oh, yeah. And um, he didn't, this, Toby didn't necessarily kill him. But he didn't necessarily save him, so indirectly he caused the guy's death. Mm -hmm. And even at that, you know, he didn't feel closure about that there. Yeah. And then he finds out in Spider-Man 3 who the real killer was, and he goes crazy again. Hi. Hi. Oh, sorry, interrupting. That's all right. That's all right, what's up? I got up for five minutes. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so like, through that experience, Toby was able to go to Tom and make sure that he didn't repeat the same mm -hmm. mistake that he did. That's basically what they were there for. You yeah. Being where you are and you don't want to do what we did. What we did, yeah. And I do think, especially with Killing Up Me, I did like it because I feel like, you know, obviously it was Uncle Ben with the other two versions of Spider-Man mm. that are on the film. But it was it's quite an integral part of Peter Parker's story, in mm. a way, because it's the, kind of the first time that he really experiences, like, such a true loss and he kind of has the power... 
to do something about it. He had the true loss when he lost his uncle Ben, but with, with Tom's never really seen that play out. No. And the do the that little line, which we knew was going to be with great power comes great responsibility. responsibility. And it's only then that Tom Spider Man finds out from Toby and Andrew that you know, whenever he completes it, it was Uncle Ben who originally said that, whereas he just thought it was that make that really <coughs> no, it was his uncle. You know, it's almost like something that's predestined for all of them in yeah. a way, like it has to happen to them at some point because it really creates their character. Because in a way, I suppose, you know, being Spider-Man, you can't really truly understand the consequences of your actions unless you lose Toby and something Andrew, like that. Toby and Andrew learned that the hard way. Yeah, and definitely Tom in the end ended up learning <laughs> it the hard way too. But you see, Tom was fortunate to have Toby mm -hmm. and Andrew there, whereas Toby and Andrew didn't really have anybody. No. There. Well, they did have people there, but, you know, for Tom, uh, the, he had he happened to have somebody there with him before it was too late, whereas Toby and Andrew didn't have anybody there to stop them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I definitely think that <coughs> sort of what ended up happening to Tom Holland Spider-Man in the end of No Way Home was almost sadder mm. than what happened to the other two, because, you know, even though Toby Maguire obviously lost Uncle Ben, he still had his Aunt May and he still had MJ. Yeah. You know, even though Andrew Garfield lost, you know, Gwen Stacy, like, there's obviously that maybe not a lot of people have seen it, the secret, like, other ending. Alternative for, ending. Alternative ending for The Amazing Spider-Man 2, where his father is still alive. So if you maybe count that, you know, maybe, Aunt, like, Andrew Spider-Man still has that. But then there's Tom's Spider-Man, and just nobody in the world remembers him. Not a single person, not a single one of his friends, not, not a single Dr. one of his Strange. family, not Doctor Strange, <laughs> no one. Like, he is literally all alone as much as you could be. Like, he doesn't, he practically doesn't even exist. I'm glad that they didn't try and shove Venom in there uh, again, because <laughs> like Venom is a really good character, especially to pair with Peter Parker. But the problems with the movies is that they always tried to have too many enemies, or they just did it in a way which wasn't really very interesting. I mean, even when they had Venom in it in the th was it the third Tobey mm. Maguire movie, like he was just really uninteresting. See, uh, with Sam Raimi, mm -hmm. um, he didn't want to include Venom. It was meant to be Sandman's movie, and yeah. Sony forced Venom into the movie. Much to Sam Raimi's dismay, so that's he had to find a way to put him in the movie, and that's why we got what we got. Yeah, you know, yeah. it should have either been Sam Man's movie or Venom's movie, and they tried to shove both in. And Sam Raimi, you know, whether he likes the character or not, did try to make it to work. But um, <coughs> you only had like 15 minutes of screen time, and he's yeah. very underused. And no offense to Tover Grace, but you know, they didn't necessarily get the right <coughs> actor. Play. No, I didn't really think either. It's like it's not that he was terrible, but he just the guy that they have to invent him now is a lot better for the part. I think he kind of seems more, you know, like the <coughs> comic version. They took time to flesh the character out. Venom's a hard one to do too, because especially with Venom, you know, you've got two characters technically. It's not just like Eddie Brock you know, himself, it's both of them talking to each other in this head. Like, they build up this relationship, they build up this rapport, which I feel like in the story of Venom, that really adds to it. And when you try and kind of shove it in there and do it really quickly, it doesn't work. Because no. you don't get that. You just kind of get this angry symbiote that has no reasoning for doing what it's doing. Didn't like, even explain how you got there. No, it didn't just really explain anything. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why, you know, I was very glad that they made Venom his own movie because you got to see, you know, how he came to Earth, kind of what he's like. He has a characterization, he has a relationship with Eddie. And I think, you know, if they do make another Spider Man movie and if it, they did include Venom and Eddie in it, it would <clears> go <throat> really, really well because they have it all built up now. Because yeah. that was the problem with the other ones, there was no build up to it, like especially with a lot of these Marvel movies. It's a lot easier to kind of fit in more characters into the movies because they have other movies where they're built up. Yeah. They have a personality and you can go and learn about them more. So, but with the older ones, that's not really, that's not really there. I mean, even with all the villains that you get in, like the original Spider-Man movies, there were still some of them that I still felt like didn't get all the screen time they should have or could have been developed a bit more. And it was just because they were very rushed. I mean, even like, I thought that about the Sandman in the third one, like yeah. it just all seemed a bit... <clears throat> That's just the fourth Batman. Yeah, yeah, rushed. But I definitely think that they got the pacing really well with this movie. Like, I didn't feel like there was too much in it because I was a bit worried, you know, when you've got all these characters together, is it going to be, you know, too much content? And I'm glad that they didn't have any more than five of them. Like, the Sinister Six is a good idea, but especially on screen, they've never done the Sinister Six, and there's probably a lot of Spider-Man fans that don't know what that is. So to kind of maybe try and introduce that in this movie, I think would have been too much, because you kind of have to have the background of, like, okay, well, who are the Sinister Six? Why 
or they like you know why are they the sinister six like in toby's movie there wasn't any talk of the sinister <laughs> six at all and then they were going to do it in andrew's films but they ended up getting cancelled so i'm glad that they didn't go with that and they just kind of kept it to the five main ones that almost everybody that everybody knows i mean it, like even if you don't know all of them like everyone knows green goblin and everyone knows doc ock and i think that's enough even if maybe the other ones you aren't as familiar with yeah. you know you can still get a bit of a better grasp for it it also means that they could, they could totally make Toby Maguire's Spider-Man 4 and they could make Andrew Garfield's The Amazing Spider-Man 3 if they really wanted to. They could if they wanted to. I mean, I think that's a nice idea, but like, <coughs> something that I was kind of thinking about is like how the timeline would have changed now. Because if he kind of did try and go back and maybe continue yeah. those movies, like the timeline would complete, be completely I know, different. I mean, what they could do now with Andrew's at least, and he hasn't aged that much, Toby, no, Toby sadly aged the most. But uh, they could totally make The Amazing Spider-Man 3 and The Amazing Spider-Man 4 and have them just be prequels to New Way Home. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to, you have uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 4 just end whenever Andrew enters New Way Home. Mm -hmm. you, you could do something like that there with it. Definitely, honestly, if I had to see them do something, I would love to see them do something else with Andrew Spider-Man. Because even though, you know, the third of Toby's <coughs> movies wasn't very good. <laughs> you know, you still kind of had an ending there. You know, yeah. it wasn't really a satisfying ending. It no. wasn't a happy ending that you wanted, but it was an ending. Just Andrew Garfield never got that. No. And that's like I was actually most excited to see him in the movie specifically because we never got an ending for him. So at least there's a bit of idea of maybe where he's kind of gone or what he's <laughs> doing a Rage. little bit. Rage. Mm -hmm. Going around kicking the, the crap out of everybody. Probably, yeah. <laughs> like he did in the first movie, trying to find some best killer. He probably went straight back to that. And the sounds of it, it sounds like that's what he did. Probably, yeah. <laughs> but I just thought the whole thing was really well done. It didn't feel like two and a half hours. No, it didn't. It went very fast because there was always something happening, like it wasn't slow paced. And it wasn't confusing either, I don't think. I feel like maybe if you haven't really watched a lot of Doctor Strange or if you didn't really, if you don't know anything about WandaVision, it might have been a bit confusing because that's a problem that i sort of find with these marvel movies now like if you don't watch Previous all the shows and stuff you'll be confused and i think that puts a lot of people off i mean one of my <laughs> friends he wouldn't he didn't want to go and see spider-man because he's like oh well they're doing the multiverse stuff and that's too confusing i can't be bothered to keep up with it so he just dropped it who was that absolutely that's he a... just decided he didn't want to no i mean as long as you watch it as long as you've seen honestly for this movie particularly as long as you've seen the Tobey Maguire and mm -hmm. Andrew Garfield movies and watch, no, watch the previous Tom Holland movies, you're pretty much up to speed because it focuses more on Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. It does, you know, definitely. Than it does. It, there's more context there than there is with Endgame and Infinity where you don't necessarily have to watch them too. It was very mm -hmm. much... It was, no Way Home was more of a sequel to Tobey and Andrew's movies as well than yeah, it was... a bit. You know, to freaking Far From Home. <coughs> well, it was a sequel to that there. But, like, you find that... Personally, even I already have seen Endgame and Infinity War, and it's not really mandatory mm -hmm. to get the speed. It's just another standalone Spider-Man story, and it does reference the other movies, but it's mostly just Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. It definitely helps if you've seen the other, like the other kind of Marvel stuff, though, because it does add maybe some context of like, okay, well, why is this all of a sudden happening? Like, why mm -hmm. is there all of a sudden magic in new universes? What does like, Doctor Strange mean that he blipped for five yeah, years? Yeah, what is the, why isn't mm -hmm. Doctor Strange, you know, the it's Sorcerer it. Supreme anymore? Like, what's all this <laughs> that's happening? What does he mean that he blipped for five years? It's yeah. like, you know, it does add a bit of context, but I de definitely understood what my friend meant and how, you know, maybe if you're not, like, a religious follower of Marvel, it can be quite daunting. Yeah. Because, especially getting into the Marvel movies now, because they're all kind of entangled now, like, before, you could just kind of watch them all. Like, you could skip, like, Captain America if you wanted, if you yeah. didn't care, and just watch Iron no, Man movies. <laughs> but now, now, yeah, but now if you haven't seen all those other movies, there's a lot of references or stuff that you won't understand, or storylines that won't make sense, or, oh, well, why is this happening now, like, when it was explained in a different movie? Like, definitely when I started to get into Marvel, like, I find that was a problem. Because I only started to get into Marvel, like, maybe, like, two years ago. Um, obviously by that point a lot of the movies were kind of intertwined with each other so it took me a very long time to actually fully understand what was happening in every movie including some of the Spider-Man ones. Now fair enough I started with Spider-Man because mm -hmm. you introduced me to it because you really like Spider-Man and that kind of did help but all the other movies among yeah. it it can make it very muddled 
but I feel like this movie did a pretty good job at not becoming too modelled and about kind of keeping it on Balanced. track. Because especially even with, with introducing like Toby and Andrew, I was worried maybe that would like offset the film and they would focus too much on them. Because even though, you know, you want to see them in the movie and you want to see them there and see them at Drac, like, it's still Tom Holland's Spider-Man movie. Yeah. So I was maybe concerned that they were going to put too much attention onto Toby and Andrew, but they actually balanced out the whole thing really well. And I got you got to see a lot of interactions that the three of them had together that you didn't necessarily expect. I will say, missed opportunity was the meme. The shooting. Uh, the, the credits referenced it. Oh, did it? Mm -hmm. Richard pointed it out. I didn't notice it. He was pointing. I was like, what? Well, was there like a drawing in the credits that was just Yeah, they're all pointing out each other. They did, they did, they did. It's after they do the billing for Toby and Andrew. It's after oh. that, I think, they do it. I think I was maybe talking to the person sitting next to me at the time, <laughs> waiting for the two after credit scenes, which took way too long to, to come up. Norman Osborne, yeah, Willem Dafoe definitely sold the, for this performance. It was mm -hmm. interesting to see his character go back to being Norman again and it's like he's trying to get away and it's kind of a shame you know that I think if Toby had realised that in his movie he might have been able to do something for him. Yeah because yeah you do get to see more of Norman rather than Green Goblin which I definitely enjoyed you know he has that inner conflict of you know he wants to be a good person you know he wants to be Norman he doesn't want to do all these horrible things he doesn't even know all the horrible things he's doing I mean that moment after Peter's been just about to kill him and Norman wakes up and he's like, oh god, what did I do? <laughs> like, he, the, the poor guy has no clue what he's just done and you can see it on his face that he knows he's done something terrible and that he'll never be able to take it back but it wasn't even him that did it but he kind of gets the blame mm -hmm. for it. <laughs> it's sort of a little bit similar with Doc Ock, you know, I sort of... I never really thought about the fact, because it was mentioned in the old Spider-Man movies that he was being controlled by, yep. you yeah. know... His inherited chip in the back of his neck was fried after he first had the machine mm -hmm. demonstration. But you never really think about it, like you see him do all these oh, horrible things I and you're think, like... I knew rightly, uh, you know, you watch that movie and it's like, if they made another inherited chip put on his back, that's him sorted. Mm -hmm. But Peter... <coughs> didn't know. And I, didn't have the knowledge. He was there and he's seen that there, but he probably didn't have the knowledge, you know, that Tom Hollins did, you know, to fix that there mm -hmm. for him. And what could he do? And he's still, you know, adjusting his own life to being a Spider-Man, but like, yeah, that was the problem. If that inhibitor chip hadn't have fried during that demonstration, Doc Ock wouldn't have went and seen No, he wouldn't have went and seen It was really nice to actually see him get cured and stay that way. Yeah. Sort of thing, like, wow. Like, I wasn't expecting him to actually be cured. Like, I was expecting it to maybe happen for a minute and then it immediately get... And he was the easiest one to cure. He was, yeah. Because, you know, like, Electro is just kind of, you know, he's just got a lot of emotional problems. Like, that's what his issue yeah. is. It's just all in his own head. And he has abandonment issues. You know, Sandman, obviously, is just, you know, he just wants to go back to his family and he's filled with this <laughs> rage and I mean, this want. Speaking of Sandman, I love the fact that whenever... Um, Toby cured him. They actually had a soundtrack from Toby's movies mm -hmm. play. Play over it. And never would I thought they were going to do that. Like, they played in the movie at the right moment. Mm -hmm. And you've seen Thomas Hayden Church. Because I was wondering why, they didn't, why he was just covered in sand all the time. Because he would always flip back and forth. Yeah. And then whenever he got cured, you, you seen him. And I was like, wow. It's like, oh, wow. It felt, it felt like, you know, Spider-Man 3, his, uh, the ending where, you know, he's got that redemption again. The ending that, yeah, yeah like he finally similar. got that redemption. But, uh, no, I was glad that they kind of went the cure route. And then again, there was just a lecturer that was like, I just want to, I just want to be the most powerful motherfucker in this place. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's all I, I, he wants to do. And he's very distrustful, obviously. He doesn't think that Peter will actually yeah, help them. None of them believed it. You know, and none of them really believed it, no, apart from Norman. He was really the only one that believed it and, you know, thought that Peter could do it because the rest of them absolutely did not. I mean, <laughs> I don't even really think at that point Peter himself 100% thought he could do it. No. Like, definitely without Norman Osborn helping him with the initial starting process of making the cures, it never would have happened. And it's interesting that, you know, that even though Norman was the one he ended up, like, killing Aunt May and basically making the movie go the way it did, he was also the one that you know helped peter realize and you know be able to cure some of the others even if at some point it was a bit too late yeah. for him because you know even though they did cure him in the end like it really was too late i think for him one question i have is that whenever they are cured and they go back to their universes do they stay that way or do they die 
what would happen? Thinking. That's the big question I have. Like, are they, you know? Yeah, that's kind of what I think because if you think about it, the moments <clears throat> that they were taken from were the were the moments just before Spider Man killed them. So even if they get sent back there and they're cured, like you know, those versions of like Toby and Andrew Spider Man aren't gonna know what's happened to is them because it's in the past. They're gonna think they're bipolar or something. Yeah, you know, like, it's gonna just, be a really weird. They've just flipped from being you know trying to kill them and then all of a sudden they're changing their ways. Like imagine going back to those versions of Toby and Andrew and just saying them, explain what just happened. Mm -hmm. They're gonna look at them and be like, you know, what are you on? You're off your rocker or something. Yeah. It really does yeah. open up a whole new timeline. So yes. it does, like, it's opened a completely <laughs> new timeline and universe for both, you know, all of them for these events. Like, whether or not, you know, they'll survive, you know, is a question I don't think we'll ever get the answer to. I think maybe it'll be left up to the fans to decide. Mm. Maybe I mean, that's where the debate comes in, from. Yeah, that's where the debate comes in. It's like, you know, wh you know, what Peter did, will it actually make a difference? Mm. It's the thing, like, do, like in the end, like, even though he tried to do the right thing and ended up doing the right thing in the end, you know, was it even worth it? Because they're just going to go back, you know, to the moments before their death. Mm. Anyway, you know, will the other versions of Toby and Andrew, you know, take pity on them and realise this, or will they just go ahead and kill them anyway? Like, it's a question that you don't really know and it does open up a lot of interesting possibilities for Spider-Man in the future but I do think that you know a little bit of a problem with Spider-Man that I could sense will maybe come up is there being like too much of it because since they've kind of you know you've got into the Spider-Verse which is a whole other you know yeah collection of Spider-Man <laughs> Spider-Women you know and then you've got you know these movies and Andrew's movies and Toby's movies and so much stuff, and it's like, will it come to a point where there's too much content and it's too cluttered? Well, look at the MCU movies already, is there too much content? I think mm. it's slowly maybe starting to go that way. Like, there is so much content, like, unless you're a really dedicated fan, like, it can be really hard to keep track. Like, not that the content's not good, it is. But there is definitely such a thing as too much content, and I do worry that because they've opened up this whole multiverse with Spider-Man, that they will try and do too much. Because, you know, not only is there going to be another end of the Spider-Verse movie, I do believe Miles Morales is getting his own movie also at some point. I heard that. Or it was in the <coughs> works that they wanted to do a live-action Miles well, Morales. The, uh, Jimmy Fox's Electro did reference they did reference it. They did, know? yeah, Black Spider-Man. saying, you know, uh, he was hoping that Spider-Man would be black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, there is a black Spider-Man. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Well, maybe not um, Spider-Man yet, but, you know, it looks like they're going to go that way. So if Tom doesn't want to come back, they could introduce Miles Morales. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just hope that, you know, the writing will stay good and they're not and they're not going to try and to th <laughs> throw too many other versions of Spider-Man in there. You know, because Into the Spider-Verse was sort of its own contained thing, especially because it was animated and it had a pretty solid, you know, reasoning for why they were all there and ending and it worked out really well. So I don't really think there's a plot hole or anything there. But definitely, like, you know, a lot of people want to see them do stuff, more stuff with Toby and Andrew Spider-Man now. And then there's other people you know, like me, that would like to see Miles Morales, you know, be realised on the screen, or they want to see more Spider-Man stuff. It's just, it does have the potential, you know, if it's not written carefully, to kind of go out of control yeah. a little bit. You know, all the MCU movies had a chance of that. I mean, Endgame and Infinity War, like, for only it was written so well, that would have been a disaster. Because there was just so much going on all the time. There were so many characters, there were so many plot lines. So I do hope that they keep the writing standard up on that. You know, if they do make any more, you know, movies with Tom Holland, that they'll continue to be good quality. And if they don't, any of the other Spider-Man <coughs> movies that they make will, you know, will be good. I just don't hope they reboot the franchise again. Because, oh my god, you know, after three times, you know, it'd be different, like, having Miles Morales' stuff. Because, you know, he's completely, you know, he's in a completely different universe. Like, his story's a bit different. You know, like, you even got to see in Into the Spider-Verse, like, you know, his parents and his family. Like, he has those things that the other... Peter Parker's don't. So kind of maybe starting up that part of the franchise would make sense. But don't 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 reboot Peter Parker again. Okay. They did have <coughs> Miles Morales' uncle or his brother mm -hmm. appear in Homecoming. Yes, they did. You're right. I forget which one it was. <coughs> so um, looks like they, they can go down that road if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Um. I find it interesting is that Disney announced the new Spider-Man trilogy, and it's more. <coughs> is this Tom Holland's trilogy? Yeah. Is this Miles Morales? Or is this Toby's one trilogy? 
next one Andrews, next one Tom's. Mm -hmm. I didn't give any clarification or any information on what the trilogy was going to be. <coughs> Instead of, I think I should be more specific when I say like, don't make any more, like, don't reboot Spider-Man again. Don't reboot Peter Parker again specifically. Mm. You know, if you want to reboot other versions of Spider-Man, okay. But like Peter Parker, just let just let that rest. Like, there's three yeah. versions of him now. There's three mm. completely different <coughs> events. You know, like just just let it die. <laughs> like sometimes you do just kind of have to let things go. You know, because then if you don't, they'll start to get shit. Yeah. Essentially, which is kind of what I think happened with, you know, Toby's. Toby's and Andrews. It's like they just got a bit shitter as they went on. I mean, if you look at the Morbius movies and the Venom movies, they're non MCU films. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that Toby or Andrew could show up. And apparently, the Morbius trailer has like a reference Spider Man. I think it does, we're yeah. I'm not sure which one. I think it might be Toby's. Mm -hmm. So. Tobey Maguire could probably show up in that, which would be awesome. Maybe, yeah. again, like the universe of like Marvel and everything like that has just expanded so much is that it could show up anywhere. And it's like, it's nice to see it expand, it's nice to see it grow, but then again, you know, it's, you kind of get to the point where you're like, you know, is this going a bit too much? I suppose you can trust Marvel, Kevin Barry and Avi Arad, you know, because they seem to be taking their time with this year. Like, yeah. Well, like, you know, and the X-Men are coming in as well, so... I would have faith that they would do it right. I mean, look at what they've done so far. They haven't really caused, you know, a mess. They've done everything. No, right. like, all the movies are pretty good. Honestly, the most recent Marvel movie that I really didn't like was Captain Marvel, and I'm not alone in that sentiment. A lot of people didn't like Captain Marvel. I don't really like Black Widow much. I haven't seen mm -hmm. Black Widow yet, but I heard some pretty positive reviews about it. I think that's more of just a taste thing. Like, you know, are you into Black Widow or are you not? It didn't really work because, um,. She's already gone. Yeah, she's already dead. And I think if they had made that movie sooner. Yeah. Whenever it was first announced, it probably worked out better. But then the end of it actually does lead into what the really MCU is now. Mm -hmm. It does kind <clears> of <throat> tie everything together. No, but I think, I think Spider-Man movies do have a bright future ahead of them. Yeah. But I think, it, as always, it really does fall into the hands of the people writing it and producing it. You know what they're gonna do with it next. I mean, because this is argue, you know, I'm not even gonna say arguably, it is the best Spider-Man movie of all time. Like a lot mm. of the fans are already claiming this, and honestly, I've seen all of them, and I think it is too. You know, so it's kind of like where are they gonna go now? Like they've done the best of the absolute yeah. best. The expectations for the rest of it are so high, and it's kind of like you know, if there was gonna be a time where it would crumble, it would be now. But mm. I really do hope that. You know that won't happen because it's a really good franchise. I really enjoy it, and I don't want to see it rebooted again. <laughs> mm. I don't think anyone wants it. Well, that. it just means after reboot it, they can always just bring it into the MCU again because you know they've introduced the multiverse. Mm -hmm. So if you get a new reboot of Spider Man, like don't be surprised if Doctor Strange shows up in it or yeah. Toby and Andrew come back again. That's not a thing. I was wondering in No Way Home, whenever Ned gets Toby and Andrew, and I was wondering. Are they currently in Tom's universe, or are they just in their own universes? Oh, they're in Tom's universe. Yeah, so they, they got pulled in as well? Yeah, they got pulled in to around. Tom's universe, and then when Ned was trying to look for Peter Parker, like, there's three different yeah. ones. Yeah. So that's why the other two came up first. I think it was also because, you know, <laughs> it was implied, like, those Peters were kind of like, you know, what the hell's going on? I want to figure out what's happening. Like, they wanted to be found. Yeah. But... Uh, Tom Holland's Peter didn't want to be found, so I think that's maybe a reason why, like, he, you know, the other two showed up first. Mm. I also did like the fact that they made, made Ned kind of magic, I loved it. Yeah. Because it's just like... It's only because he's wearing Doctor Strange's rings. Well, yeah. it's because, like, when you have Doctor Strange's rings, it's like, he already has a set amount of magic there, because even if you watch the movie Doctor Strange, like, he wasn't immediately able to do that, but Ned mm. was. Like, <clears throat> Strange wasn't immediately able to open portals or do anything like that, and that, but Ned was. So that could be interesting. I mean, I like the character of Ned. Like, I liked the introduction into the movie, but now that, you know, they don't really remember Peter anymore, and are they going to be in it anymore? Like, you know, was it really... <clears throat> in the comics, Ned became the Hobgoblin. Yes, Ned became Hobgoblin. So, they did uh, reference that. They did. <coughs> he could be a super villain one day, trying to kill Peter Parker, and now he doesn't know who he is anymore. That can happen. Mm hmm. That'd be tragic. I mean, that'd just be like, heartbreaking, wouldn't I it? I hope they do that, though. Yeah, it's kind of like. You fun to see that on screen? You almost want them to do it. Because <laughs> it's like, you know, even though that'd be kind of heartbreaking, like, it'd be really interesting. Imagine if he killed Tom Holland's Peter Parker, and then Miles Morales has to take him down. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the thing. It's like, you know. 
will they ever end a Spider-Man movie with killing, you know, a Spider-Man? Well, like, I, th I thought they were going to kill Toby there. Yeah, I actually thought they were going to kill Toby, and I was like, what the hell, how's that going to work? And then they didn't. Right, yeah, and it's not the first time he's been stabbed. No, it's not. They've all been stabbed, like, multiple... No, Toby was stabbed. The third movie, I think he was stabbed in all time. He was stabbed a couple times. I think he has been stabbed a couple times. So he has. I've only seen Toby Maguire's movies, like, <coughs> re really once all the way through, and I do mostly remember them. Right, Harry, Harry Osborn stabbed him. Oh yes, it was Harry Osborn stabbed fight. him. And I'm pretty sure he got stabbed again, I can't remember. You'd think, think, I, would, you think I would know, but you know, he probably got stabbed and we didn't see it, but you know... Yeah. He's Spider-Man, he the, gets beat up. With the amount of time that's passed, you know, who knows what's happened. Yeah, he's been stabbed, probably shot at too. Mm-hmm. Well, he has been shot at, but you know, I don't think he was very hit with a bullet the way Tom was in this movie. You know, something that I was kind of wondering, you know, I sort of talked about before about how, how all these MCU movies are kind of intertwined now and all the characters kind of know each other and interact with each other. You know, the fact that nobody remembers Peter Parker now, like, I wonder if that will be, have any kind of impact on the other movies because it's like all of a sudden, like, he just doesn't exist sort of thing. And I wonder, you know... I will think, that be used somehow? I, th I think it was only for Tom's universe. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I know, but I but I mean for you know Tom's universe, the MCU yeah. universe that we're currently in. Like, will that appear, you know, in other films? Because I guess in a way, you know, if Tom Holland wanted to leave, like now would be the perfect time because none of the other characters in the MCU remember him. So if they never talked about Peter Parker again or mentioned him ever again, it would make sense. Yeah, until they go look at the footage that they have of Peter Parker. You know, <clears throat> mm -hmm. pretty sure, like, said Mysterio's drones. I think mm -hmm. that was all erased, though. Uh, okay. So it was, like, I think that was all erased. Because otherwise, like, they would have found, like, in Aunt May's house, like, they would have found pictures of her and Peter, and then obviously maybe Happy would have recognised Peter mm -hmm. when they were at the graves. So I feel like the only thing that actually makes sense is that all of that footage has been erased. Because Strange did say, even though he will still exist, like, he'll still physically exist... He, he won't anywhere else, like, he'll be completely erased from history, essentially. So, I think maybe that's what that was, but I don't know, it's just this weird concept, you know, he's completely erased, you know, from the timeline, so that means that in all the other movies he'd be completely erased, yeah. too, like, nobody will remember him. <clears throat> Which is just kind of, it's just really depressing when you think about it, that not a single person in the whole world remembers who he was. And that's it. Yeah, I think that's pretty much, well, reviewed, is it a review or discussion? Okay, a bit of both. A bit of both. You know, reviewing some of the content, discussing it, discussing it. Thank you for having me on your wonderful channel. All right. This is one of the more tamer videos I've seen. <laughs> <laughs>